It's a very big day for all of you, I know. But I suppose you want to know a bit about my journey in life. I was born in a very committed and loyal family in Iran, in the Jewish family. The core of everything I achieved in life was due to my parents, God bless their souls. They were the cornerstone of my life. Even though I was going to school, but because I don't sleep a lot, I started writing a book from four o'clock in the evening to late in the morning. This is the same thing I did for my PhD. I'll come to that in a minute. After a year, I published a book which became, and still is, after almost 55 or 60 years, the bestsellers, and I proved him wrong. And that taught me a lesson that in life, if you have an aim, if you have a purpose, you could focus and you can succeed. In 1967, after doing my uh, national service, I left Iran and went to the United States. After trying to learn the language, because I was fluent in French, but not fluent in English at the time, and I started to take some courses in Queen's College during the night. I transferred them afterward for a day. I did my BA in Queen's College. And in the course of that, I was doing a lot of work. I was hurt many times. I failed many times. But every failure became the cornerstone of my success. Do not underestimate your strength when you are faced with failures. It's always helpful. Always learn. And go even harder to achieve your, 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 your goal. In 1976, uh, I was coming to London a lot. In 1976, uh, I came to London. It just so happened that I met the love of my life. I moved in in 1978. We got married. And in 1981, our first son, Daniel, was born. I went to my wife and I said, uh, I think I decided to do a PhD. And she looked at me and she said, are you from this planet or from somewhere else? <laughs> you just got married, you have a young kid, you have a business to run, what do you want, you want to do a PhD? I said, I found the university, I want to go, and I don't worry about it, I'm not going to deprive you of my time. The quality time you always have, because I use my own time, which was again between four and eight in the morning. So I did my PhD, but I found an institution which is on parallel to any institution that I found or I got involved in later on. Let me tell you, I used to walk in, go around. After I did my PhD, obviously, I immediately endowed the chair that uh, the, the director mentioned. Then I used to go to the director's room and look at the portal, portal cabinet across the, uh, the room of the director's room. And I turned around to him one day and I said, you know something? I can't see the sort of these portal cabins. Give me two years. I'll find somebody to build a building. If I can't find anybody, I'll pay for it myself. I was very lucky. I had a very good relationship with King of Brunei. I walked into his office. He wanted to build a mosque. I told him not to build a mosque. I said, there are plenty of mosques. We need a cultural institution. We need education. He wrote a check for 10 million pounds. I took the check. I came to university. I went to Macmillan at the time, who was the director. And I said, here it is. I promise you, so I'm doing it, because I love this institution. I never forget, he turned around to me and said, I used to be a banker, I'm a city banker. I haven't seen that many zeros on one piece of paper. <laughs> so that was the story of Brunei. Right I'm not the only person who fell in love with Swat. Many leaders in business, politics, and world did too. Some of the most influential people in the world are Swazi and mine. Let me now share with you something which is even more important. You may ask how a guy who left the country in 1967, the country of his birth, with only $750, and that was the leftover of the money after I sold the, royal, the, the royalty for my, for my book, got here and is standing in front of you now. I'll tell you why. Because throughout my struggle to get here, 
I followed 10 guiding principles. I'll share them with you. Be passionate. Life without passion is like fire without a flame. Be patient. Dream, plan, and pursue. Be unique. Don't ever want to be somebody else. That position has already been taken. Be generous. Generosity is a blessing from Almighty. Be well informed. We live in a world of mass information. We are living in a world of mass information full of misinformation. Be present. I'm sure you have heard this before, but I have added something to it that I share with you. The saying goes that the past is history, the future is mystery, and the present is a gift. And it is a gift. That is why it is called present. Every morning you wake up, every morning you look up to the sky, remember, that is part of that gift. Be humble. Always remember, glory belongs to God and humility belongs to man. Be mindful. Ownership is nothing by myth. We are all only temporary custodian of what we believe we own. Be loving. No child is born to hate. We are born as human beings first. Religion is given to us as birth. In reality, there is by far more that unites humanity rather than divides humanity. And finally, be wealthy. There is a huge difference between being rich and being wealthy. The definition of rich is only financial. The definition of wealth is totally different. It includes good health, a strong family, trusted friends, and respectable reputation. The Bible said, Good name is like a good oil. Mix it with liters of water. Give it half an hour. Shake it for as long as you like. The oil would end up at the top. The only thing you have, the only thing you leave behind is your name, change. I wish every one of you, not only to become rich and prosperous, but more importantly, to become wealthy citizen of all world. You heard that in our collection, we have different collections from the Islamic art to Hajj and to others. There are eight different collections, 35,000 pieces. We have published, we are planning to publish 100 volumes, which is going to be the biggest publication in modern history, out of which 72 are already out there on our website. But all this happens because I learned simply from nature. I was walking when I was when I, when I was army medic, and those days there was a lot of snakes in the field, but they were not venomous. So I was, I was following them, how they get away from us. And I realized that they find a little hole, which is not much bigger than the size of their body, and they straight go in, and it dawned on me. Imagine if they care their body, they cannot get in. Choose a straight path in life. That is the path to success. I'm known to have, a, to have awakened the sleeping giants. This is what I always say. I bring them to light. I bring them and introduce them to humanity. But I have a challenge for you today. As you begin your own journey, I challenge you. you I challenge you to identify your own sleeping giant. In whatever field it may be, to bring it to life and share it with the world. 
As the elder of this great institution, I welcome you to Soas family and wish you peace and prosperity. It's a big day for you. Congratulations.